Kristen Stehauer, Academic Vice President and Provost at Northwood University. Welcome to the latest installment of News from Midlands University, a program by Northwood University. And as always, we have a great lineup for you today. We're going to be hearing from some student leaders who are putting on the 48th annual Stafford Dinner. We will hear from our Vice President of Undergraduate Enrollment about a wonderful new grant to help students attend private universities. We're going to hear about our world class and world champion esports team with coach Cody Elson. And finally, we're going to wrap up with hearing about a very unique gift that a Mount Pleasant couple gave to Northwood University to help our students. But first, let's get started. Uh, let's hear about the 48th annual Stafford Dinner. We have Cameron and Natalie here. First, tell us about your roles, and then we want to get into what people can expect at this wonderful event. So I'm Natalie Preston. I'm the co-chair and the logistics chair for the 48th annual Stafford Dinner. And my role is to, I'm like the behind the scenes, like the BEO, so I'm making- And what does BEO mean? Banquet event order. It's yes. making sure that everything goes to time. I'm the timeline lady. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna land that plane on time, yep. as we like to say, <laughs> wonderful. How about you? I'm Cameron Hag, and I am also a co-chair with Natalie, as well as Kylie King, who is our other co-chair, and we kind of help manage the whole board to make sure everything runs smoothly so we have a great night of on February 18th. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, Pro Professor Stafford and how he inspired this event that's almost 50 years old? So he was our first chairman, Mr. William D. Stafford. He was the first chairman of the hotel, restaurant, and resort management department. And he wanted students to get a hands-on learning experience through putting on an actual event for like the community to join in. That's wonderful. And this year's theme I heard is Stafford in Wonderland. How did you come up with it? And what can guests expect when they first walk in the room? We came up with it kind of as a spin-off in our own style of Alice in Wonderland. And so Stafford in Wonderland is our own take on that. So when guests arrive, we want them to be wowed by the decorations and by the food and every element that we put together for the dinner, but also to be put into our Wonderland of Stafford in Wonderland. And you mentioned the food. <laughs> I'd love to hear about the menu. So our menu is eight courses this year. It starts with some past appetizers, but our big show hitters are our beet pesto pasta. That's actually a pretty magenta color. And then we have our two dual entrees. They are a pork roulade with a sweet apple stuffing and then a chicken piccata. And then finishing it up, we have a unique dessert and that is our poached pear with a creme fraiche. It's very sophisticated sounding, and that, the students will prepare that entire menu, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And you also did some tastings to test out which recipes, what flavors people like best. How did yeah. that go? We had a tasting in October, and we invited students and staff to try out some of the ideas we were thinking of doing for the menu, and we got feedback from it while also having some decorations to kind of have a makeshift dinner to see what we liked, what we didn't like. Great test run, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So let's get into the details so people in the community can, who want to attend have the opportunity to do so. So the event will be held on February 18th at the Great Hall Banquet Center and Convention Center in Midland. Uh, you can purchase tickets online at www.northwood.edu backslash Stafford. Okay. There are also sponsorships available that if people who cannot attend the dinner still want to support our um, program, they can go to northwood.edu backslash Stafford as well to find those. And you're ready for a big crowd because that venue certainly can accommodate a great number of people. Mm -hmm. So come one, come all. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Everybody can come dress in their colorful cocktail attire. We're hoping to have a really fun magical night. We have a alumni magician coming as well as the guest speakers which are the Creation Coffee uh, co-owners. Alumni of Northwood University yep. on top <laughs> of it too. Okay. And let's think about um, what else should people know about this event? 
We're just really grateful that we can host it at the Great Hall because of the space. So we are able to put together activities for the guests to enjoy and observe during their meal. So we have like all of the space for it and to be able to have a great magical night. And this is all for a good cause. Not only are students learning by doing, but you're raising scholarship money. Yes, all of the proceeds go towards furthering the education of the students in the hospitality um, management program at Northwood. That really ties with our philosophy of individual freedom and personal responsibility, doesn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so before we finish this segment, I'd love to hear one thing each of you has learned so far in your roles. I would say Time management is something that I have learned a lot more about and how to manage not only like my time with the group that and like when we're in our board meetings, but also my time by myself and making sure I get my stuff done to be able to complete everything for all of us. I would also back off of time <laughs> management. Time management is important in any role that you have, job or any role that you take, but also just learning how to get the process of things done, especially with an event that big. Learning all of those rules is super important, not only for the dinner, but also for later in life to pursue in a career like Definitely, that. Definitely, because this has been months in the planning. Mm -hmm. how, how long ago did you start planning this? We started in last April is when the new board was elected. So we've been planning since April of 2022. Wow, almost a year. <laughs> yeah. so that will and that hard work will pay off. Thank you for your leadership, and we're just looking forward to that. So, please, we hope our community members will be inspired to attend the student-led event for a good cause to raise scholarship dollars for our hospitality program at Northwood University. We're going to be joined next by our vice president of undergraduate enrollment, Susie Poli Smiths, with some exciting grant information, but first, a short message from Northwood University. Hey, Mom. Can we read another book, please? I don't know, honey. It's kind of late. You're late. Mommy's going to be a few minutes late today. Too late. Too late. Too late. No, it's not too late. I can send over the revised contract in the morning. Look forward to doing this. Work. You know what? Welcome back. I am pleased to be joined with my colleague, Susie Poli smith Vice President of Undergraduate Enrollment, to share some exciting news with us. Welcome, Susie. We're glad to have you. Hi, Kristen. I'm very excited to be here today. Thank you. Yeah, so tell us about the historic news. Well, today I'm going to talk to you about the Michigan Achievement Grant. It's a historic level of funding that the state of Michigan offers to students that qualify, $4,000. Wow, and that's to attend private institutions, right? Absolutely. So who doesn't like to talk about money, right? So this opportunity allows students to look at a private school, making it more affordable than ever. So it's worth looking at in terms of stackable scholarships and aid. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to somebody considering a college or university these days? I would say the timing is right. Um, if you are looking for a great return on your investment, first of all, Northwood University offers great leadership opportunities for our students, a pragmatic um, education with a great foundation of values, and also opportunities to touch and feel and experience what they want to do. So you can graduate with a degree and a resume. That's so important. And now is the time it's more affordable than ever. That makes me think about when you mentioned return on investment, that Georgetown University study that put Northwood University in the top 12% nationwide for return on investment. Absolutely. For business education. So yeah, that all fits together so nicely. And how about graduating uh, in four years? Oh, that's a big one. As a mother and a former director of financial aid, this is one of our unique identifiers. We know by and large that students are taking five years plus, not just at state universities, but private. Northwood has a very great success rate in graduating students in four years or less. If you follow our curriculum, the way it's designed when you come in, you will graduate in four years. And when I say four years or less, if you took maybe a summer class or you were a high achiever and took a few extra classes, you could get out in four years 
years, or the less part, I apologize, or some students can actually graduate with a bachelor's and a master's degree in four years, which is a very exciting opportunity. That's quite a career accelerator, isn't it? It really is, absolutely. Wow. And if somebody's interested in this grant, what should they do? They need to file a FAFSA. So by and large, filing the FAFSA is very important. What's a FAFSA? The FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid, with the keyword being free. Um, you need to be fully admitted to Northwood University because we will fully package admitted students because we offer scholarships as well. If you feel like, wow, this is a big form, I can't fill it out, we're here to help. That's another unique identifier. You can call our financial aid office, they're happy to assist you, but the minute that you apply to Northwood and even prior, you'll get a financial aid counselor that will walk you through every step of the process. The priority deadline's March 1st, but we like students to apply early. Why wait? And by and large in Michigan, the FAFSA numbers are down, so apply for the FAFSA. Okay. You have everything to gain, nothing to lose. That is wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us with this great news, Susie. Thank you, Kristen. I'm excited. And I believe that you can apply online yes and also call Northwood directly all right for that personalized experience yes. well we'll be back after a short message with our nation's eSports coach of the year sharing news about their latest world championship we've never met but we know you you've got big plans for your career and your life yes I love it you're the overachiever the go-getter with the entrepreneurial God, spirit. Such a cool idea. You're also guided by this inner compass, your true north. Yeah, we know you. And maybe it's time for you to know us. Welcome back, viewers, and welcome back, Cody Elson, eSports Coach of the Year, and our team is two, our two-time world champions. Yeah. What, tell us about the most recent world championship. Yeah, so uh, back in December, um, we were down in Brazil, Sao Paulo, Brazil, playing in the Valorant World Championship, and uh, 51 countries, and we came out on top. It was uh, it wasn't an easy journey in terms of uh, it was a very tough competition. Everything was really close. Plus, it's uh, a long ways away. Yeah, that too. But luckily, the time dif time difference was only two hours ahead for us, so we kind of had a little advantage there. But um, you know, it was really fun. It was a good experience for the students, and the journey actually was just like a year long journey qualifying for the event. So. Um, you know, went from online to regional Milwaukee to nationals in Dallas to world championship in Brazil representing Team USA. So it was a it was an incredible experience for the kids, and I mean, honestly, they're never going to forget it. Yeah, how big was the squad we took? Uh, so we took five players. Um, our, our our Valorant roster is actually like twelve, but only the the five qualifying players actually were getting flown out to Brazil. Um, but yeah, no, it was awesome. Um, most of them are freshmen sophomores, so we have a pretty good roster still for the next you know three or four years and it's gonna be cool to see how far they can actually go beyond the world championship absolutely mm -hmm. and that's our second world championship right so what was the first one yeah so that's our second world championship in uh, the last six months we won the collegiate rocket league world championship um, back in June um, beat a couple of colleges from Canada there ironically and beat Team Canada down in Brazil so um, we've got we've got Team Canada's number right now for sure yeah well I, I hear we're the team to beat right yeah Do we mean, go in as the the heavy favorite um, for Rocket League, for sure. Uh, down in Brazil, it was, I don't think anybody had us in the top eight, actually. Um, Why is that? Because uh, there's so much talent around the world, and honestly, none of us really know how good the other universities and colleges are, you know. Like, nobody thought, you know, uh, Macedonia was going to make the run they did, but they were one of the best teams there. I think the talent is just so good, because, I mean, to qualify in your country, um, there's six, over 6,000 uh, universities that try to qualify for this. Um, from all the stages and I think I don't think anybody knows <laughs> Everybody's got to be pretty good to get to Brazil, yeah. so nobody really knows who's got that extra level. But our guys have been playing together essentially um, since April or uh, since January of uh, 2022. So we've had a lot of chemistry built up compared to other schools, and I think that was a huge advantage for us. Teamwork makes a big yeah, difference. for sure. Always in competition. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talk about esports as this kind of like it's a separate sport, but in fact, it's like saying athletics, isn't it? 
and then mm -hmm. the different games are like sports. Could you? Yeah, so esports uh, is like help our viewers understand that difference. Absolutely. So esports is like um, athletics in a way that term, right? So athletics has a group of sports underneath it: basketball, football, lacrosse, hockey. Esports we have Valorant, Rocket League, Call of Duty, Overwatch, League of Legends, and goes on and on. And it's similar in terms of how it's structured. With uh, it's not. We're, we're one unit, we're one team, but we have all the subsets under the umbrella that are individually coached and have individual rosters. It's not, it's not one set of players playing all different games, you know. They each specialize, is don't they? Yeah, each is individually recruited for. We have varsity, JV, and academy teams underneath them developing as well. Well, speaking of all those different competition opportunities, how could, if somebody's interested in getting involved with Northwood Esports, what would they do? Uh, the best way would be go to esports.northwood.edu, fill out our, you know, interest form. Um, everybody will see that and we'll get back to you. You can reach out to us on Twitter at Northwood Esport, on Facebook at Northwood Esport, or, you know, me individually at Evolve on Twitter. Um, those are the best ways that, to get a hold of us, but definitely probably the website's going to be your best bet for sure. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Well, Cody, thanks for your leadership. It is amazing to see what you've done from the idea that hatched just a few years ago to this tremendous success, and it's really thanks to your leadership. I appreciate that. I mean, obviously, having the support of the schools helped a lot, so mm -hmm. we're definitely lucky to have uh, Northwood backing us and really uh, helping us get there. Well, and please pass along our congratulations to the team, too. We're so proud of them. Will do. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thank we you. hope to have you back to hear about more championships. We will. We'll be back. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Cody. And after this brief message, we'll be joined by Justin Marshall sharing information about a very unique gift to Northwood University from a Mount Pleasant couple. Hey, Mom. Can we read another book, please? I don't know, honey. It's kind of late. You're late. Mommy's going to be a few minutes late today. Too late. Too late. Too late. No, it's not too late. I can send over the revised contract in the morning. Look forward to doing this. You know what? Welcome back. We're joined by Justin Marshall, Chief Development and Engagement Officer, to share information about a very unique gift that has grabbed national headlines. That's right. We have a wonderful couple, Michael and Diane Morey, just outside of Mount Pleasant, Michigan, who have really put Northwood even more on the map, is what I would say, through their generosity and donating uh, their classic car collection. And that donation has received national headlines everywhere from Fox Business to CBS News, Forbes, our great local papers as well. It's been a phenomenal story for us. They've certainly kept us busy, but we've had a lot of fun working with the family on this gift. So what was it about the gift that grabbed that national attention? It's a great question. And I think the American classic vehicle, the classic cars, the Chevy Camaros, the Corvettes, the Mustangs have always had a piece of, you know, the heart of every American and, people around the globe, you know, they're just great examples of American innovation and American spirit. And it's such a personal gift. I mean, when you take a look at a lifetime of collecting cars and all of the cars that they had in this collection and to make such a generous effort to say, we want to do something different with these cars now. We've had fun with them. Now it's time to tell a different story. I think I think that resonates with people, and I think it captures their interest. Yeah, and really so generous of them to give a transformative gift. Absolutely. And their values are so similar to the university's values. They absolutely love Northwood University and the Northwood idea. Diane and Michael are both entrepreneurs. They started businesses. Uh, the one that everyone is most familiar with is Bandit Industries right there outside of Mount Pleasant as well. They they thought they could build a wood chipper better than anyone else. And guess what, they were right. And their entrepreneurial spirit really paid off. And they see that reflected in our students. Uh, as we've talked about before, more than 30% of our graduates own part or all of their own business. And our students, while they're at Northwood, 
own their own business and we're attracting students from high school who own their own business. So they see, they see themselves in these students and they, they really want to make an impact in their lives and allow them to take what they did with their life and give them a head start. So their lifetime collection of classic cars, how is that being converted into helping students? So they donated a total of 35 vehicles in Northwood. 34 of them were just sold off at Mecham Auctions January 6th, just this past Friday. And it was an amazing experience. And the family was very, very happy with this route. They wanted to sell these vehicles. They wanted the money to come back to Northwood University. Um, and how will it be used? And the money is going to be used to upgrade our campus. Uh, we're going to build a new courtyard area in between two of our historic Eldon B. Dow facilities right on campus. Call that the Mori Courtyard. And that's just a small portion of the funding. The rest of the money is really going to help students with scholarships, endowed scholarships, making sure that a student who doesn't have the ability to come to Northwood now has that support network and building Northwood's endowment to help with our free enterprise and entrepreneurial mission. That's so wonderful. One vehicle didn't go to auction. That's Tell right. us about that. So the family and Northwood really wanted to keep uh, a vehicle from their collection. And we're keeping a 1958 Chevrolet Corvette, one of the C1 series, and it is an amazingly beautiful vehicle. And we picked this car for a lot of different reasons. The Corvette's iconic, people know the brand. Again, I it think it's symbolic of everything that we stand for. Um, it was one of Michael's favorite cars as well, including a lot of his friends. They spent a lot of time and effort restoring this vehicle. And so we wanted to make sure that his legacy was preserved not only through the courtyard, but also through one of his cars on campus. And unfortunately, there wasn't anything from 1959, our founding year. But we know our founders in 1958 were thinking about starting Northwood as well and putting a lot of legwork and effort into making this dream a reality. So we think that 1958 uh, really is symbolic too. So that's a, another reason why we chose it. What a great connection to our founding. It is a great connection. And they've also talked about, uh, they kept a few cars in their collection and uh, they're willing to have those cars come to campus as well when the, when the right time comes along. Well, thank you, Justin. Yeah. Thanks for sharing the inspiring story of Diane and Michael's generous generosity and truly transformational gift to Northwood University. Well, that wraps up this month's session of News from Midlands University, a program by Northwood University. Thanks for joining us, and please join us again next month for more News from Midlands University.